This is Ray with Exploring Mysteries Unsolved. We're going to look into the case of Flight 19, November 5th, 1945. Five Grumman TBM Avengers, under the command of Charles Taylor, took off on a routine training run and disappeared somewhere in the Bermuda Triangle, and they never found nothing. It was Flight 19, which means it was the 19th flight of the day. Their idea was to take off from Fort Lauderdale, fly to east, then turn northwest, 120 miles, and then take another left and return to base. The last turn never happened. At 4 p.m., something went wrong. Lieutenant Robert Cox, another naval pilot instructor, was the first to overhear the Flight 19 radio communication. He immediately informed the air station of the situation and they contacted the Avengers to ask if they needed any assistance. Commander Taylor reported, both of my compassers are out. I'm trying to find Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm over land, but it's broken. I'm not sure. I'm in the Keys. Taylor's claims didn't make sense. He made his scheduled pass over hens and chicken skulls in the Bahamas less than an hour earlier but he believed his plane and somehow drifted hundreds of miles off course and ended up in the Florida Keys. The 27-year-old had just transferred to Fort Lauderdale from Miami and many have speculated that he was confused of the islands of Bahamas for the Florida Keys. Under normal circumstances, pilots lost in the Atlantic were supposed to point their planes towards the setting sun and fly west towards the mainland, but Taylor becoming convinced that he may be over the Gulf of Mexico, hoped to locate the Florida Peninsula. He made a fateful decision to steer Flight 19 northeast, a course that would only take them even farther out to sea. Some of his pilots seemed to have recognized that he made a mistake. One pilot stated, if we would just fly west, we'd get home. Flight 19's radio transmission soon became increasingly faint. When fuel began to run low, Taylor was heard, prepping his men for a potential crash landing in the ocean. All planes close up tight, he said. We'll have to ditch unless landfall. When the first plane drops below 10 gallons, we all go down together. A few minutes later, the Avengers radio communications were replaced by an airy buzz of static. The Navy immediately scrambled search planes and hunt for the missing patrol. Around 7.30, a pair of PBM Mariners flying boats took off from the air station north of Fort Lauderdale. Just 20 minutes later, however, one of them seemed to follow Flight 19's lead by suddenly vanishing off radar. The remains of the Mariner and its 13 crew were never recovered, but it's commonly believed that the seaplane exploded shortly after takeoff. Flying boats were notorious accident-prone, and their even nickname the flying gas tank. Suspicion that the seaplane may have gone up in flames were all but confirmed by passing merchant ships, which spotted a fireball and found evidence of an oil slick in the ocean. At first light the next day, the Navy dispatched more than 300 boats and aircraft to look for Flight 19 and the missing Mariner. The search party spent five days combing more than 300,000 square miles of territory at no avail. They just vanished. Navy Lieutenant David White later recalled, we had hundreds of planes looking and searching over land and water for days and nobody ever found bodies or any debris. The Navy Board of Investigations also were left scratching their head. Strange events of December 5, 1945 have since became an all-out manner of wild theories and speculation. The idea that Flight 19 had been gobbled up by the Bermuda Triangle, a section of the Atlantic supposedly known for its high volume of disappearances and mechanical failures, even if Flight 19 didn't fall victim to the supernatural, there's no denying that its disappearance was accompanied by a lot of odds and unanswered questions. Perhaps the strangest of all concerns, Lieutenant Taylor witnesses claimed that he arrived to Flight 19's pre-exercise briefing several minutes late and requested to be excused from leading the mission. Also, unexplained is why 
none of the members of Flight 19 made use of the radio frequency or their plane's ZBX receiver, which could have helped them lead them towards the radial naval towers on land. The pilots were told to switch on the devices, but they either didn't hear the message or they didn't acknowledge. What really happened to Flight 19? The most likely scenario is that the planes eventually ran out of gas and ditched in the ocean somewhere off the coast of Florida, leaving any survivors at the mercy of the rough seas and the deep water. Many believe the wreck of Flight 19 and its doomed rescue plane may still lurk somewhere in the Bermuda Triangle. But while the searching continues to this day, no definite sign of the six aircrafts or their 27 crewmen have ever been found. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about my videos. This is Ray with Exploring Mysteries Unsolved and I'll see you in the next video.